Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our CXO series. We're here at the New York Stock Exchange, NYSE Wired, plus the Cube. I'm Dave Vellante, and we're here with Joseph Perla, who's the CEO of Hangout. Joseph, thanks for, you just flew in. Thanks for making some time. Yeah, my pleasure. So why'd you start Hangout? I started Hangout because all social media these days is focused on fighting and conflict and division. And so I wanted to create a whole new kind of social platform that's focused on connection and unity and harmony. And I'm using music to do that. Do you? Oh, interesting. Uh, I was going to ask you if you have data on like how much of the discourse is positive versus negative versus benign. I mean, is, is it sort of, was it just gut feel that led you to this? Or did you actually, were you informed by some kind of numerics or? I think everybody in the audience and all of my friends really, when I tell them about the problems of social media, they went not along. They know that it's, <laughs> that's the problem with it. It's a gut feel. Yeah, so, okay. So back to what you were just saying about you do this through music. You're yeah. a musician. I play violin and I, I love listening to music of all kinds. And I think that anytime people are hanging out with a bunch of people at their home or in a cafe or at a club, anytime you're hanging out for many hours, you always play music. And why is that? Because it helps people get in sync, gets people on the same page, gets people in harmony. It really gets everyone synchronized so that they can start to vibe and connect. And so if you don't have music, it'd be kind of weird if you were hanging out with a bunch of people and there was never music playing for a few hours. But that's what we're all doing online every day. Or we're listening to Spotify alone, solo streaming. It's like if you went to a party and everyone puts in AirPods and listens to their own music. That'd be very weird, right? Really weird, yeah. yeah. Or, or you're a long car ride, same thing. Mm -hmm. Dead air, you put on music. Yeah, I might listen to a podcast. Yeah. Uh, but it's very emotional music. It, it evokes feelings. Uh, we, were, we were at a wedding this weekend. One of my good friends, um, She's you know my age, but she loves hip hop. But she's always out, and you know at the wedding they were playing kind of seventies music. She really wasn't into it. at the nightclub at night. She they were playing hip hop. She was doing this and dancing and loving it, right? And it was it was really interesting to see that dynamic and the effect that music has on people. So obviously you understand this well. But how do you connect music and social media? So what we do is we create virtual spaces where people can come together and they can take turns sharing the music that they love, sharing the music that fits in with their environment, or sharing something that will teach someone something or connect them in a different way. So you got an experience where hip hop was kind of something that she was getting warm to, and that's something that we can all share our own music that kind of moves us, and you can explain why. So it's not just the music, but you also explain with animated GIFs, with text, with voice, and you just tell a story about why you love this music. Okay, so this is a, a safe space, if you will, for yeah folks that want to want to share, people that want to learn, people that want to expose others to their tastes. And then you bring in a, a visual element as well. Yes, we have little avatars. I call it uh, Club Penguin mode. Everyone loves the old Club Penguin. Sure. Little avatars and people these days love having that. People love purchasing them and selling them. And so we offer that as well as, as something that helps people connect to each other. So kind of second life for music? Is that maybe, maybe not <laughs> More that. successful than second life. More yeah. <laughs> but, but still, second life was ahead of its time. I yeah, mean, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, pretty amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I think about Twitch. I think about people watching gamers mm -hmm. game. Yeah. And, and how we, when we started The Cube, we started on uh, what was then called Justin TV. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of content, mm -hmm. you know, on the internet back then. This was 2010. And we had massive audiences listening to tech TV, hmm. like, you know, people would interact like, what is this? This is boring. You know? <laughs> What's Hadoop? You know? <laughs> Maybe you don't know what Hadoop is, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, we've, had, we've had watching t TV together for a while between Justin TV and Twitch. Netflix right. even has watched together. Right. But we haven't really been pushing, oh, let's explore music together or let's explore and hang out and play and, and text chat and voice chat, but also have music in the background. And the music just creates a vibe whether that's an excited vibe or a relaxed vibe, that's just hasn't been an option until Hangout. Well, you know, back in the day, it was albums. We all got together. Yes. We would take the vinyl and we'd put it on a, you know, we'd make a DJ tape. Yes. We spent an inordinate amount of time doing that. It was yeah. frankly our favorite pastime. And um, 
we made a lot of connections that way. We learned a lot. I mean, to this day, I'm in, you know, group chats yes. with some of the guys that we used to make, you know, DJ tapes with. It was a lot of fun. It was a big part of our, our, our teenage life. So that's exactly right. We're like a group chat with music. And right now the group chats don't have music, right? The WhatsApp, which we're competing with, we're going to add music to it on a hangout. And now you'll have a hangout with music. And what we're recreating is that experience that we've lost since vinyls. It used to be you hang out on your bedroom floor, you picked a vinyl, you played it, and then your friend did the same thing, sharing the same music with you. And we've just lost that. It's awesome. I mean, it's, is it a passion project? Is it a business? Is it both? It's, it's a full on business. We're working with a m bunch of people in the industry that we're going to announce later. And mostly I'm working on it because I, I love it. I love music. I love connecting people. I love building communities. And I really want to help millions of people build these communities together, billions of people. And, you know, by fixing social platforms, we'll be able to bring people together a lot more. I think there's a big vision. A lot of people are feeling anxious. They're feeling worried. There's a lot of conflict. And I think music is a way we're going to spend the next decades actually coming together more and coming together and building together. Very cool. And artists are involved or will be involved? Or Yeah, we've done a lot of shows, even in the beta with, uh, for example, on Monday, we did a show with Sophie Tucker, which is a very popular DJ duo. Uh, we've done shows with Greta Van Fleet, a really big uh, band that's in classic rock style. We've done country type shows, hip hop shows. Uh, the music industry is super excited to bring more and more artists on this platform to promote their albums, promote their tours, and just get their music out there. And irrespective of the business model, we could talk about that later, but the content model is, is user generated. Uh, it's, it's um, incubated. How does that all work? Uh, we have, with our partnerships that are going to be announced when we launch, we have access to all your favorite music that is professionally produced. And so we're going to have all the songs that you see on Spotify. We will have that there. Okay, and then what about the underlying platform? I mean, you're obviously competing for attention with these massive platforms that have, you know, giant GPU clusters and hyper targeting of our, you know, with our appropriating our data to, to target us and maybe, maybe even foment, you know, negative discussion, which is mm -hmm. what you're trying to combat in many ways. What's the underlying platform? Like, are you just sort of hosting this on a cloud? Are you building your own cloud? Uh, we're hosted on a cloud, um, but it's an interesting question you bring up about data and AI. Mm. All other platforms, Meta, Spotify, they're using AI to create content, create playlists, and then shove them to you and tell you, oh, this is what you should read. This is what you should listen to. And I think there's going to be a big reaction to that next year. People are going to say, no, 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 I don't want the AI to tell me what to listen to and what to, what to do. I want humans to do that. I want my friends to do that. I want my trusted uh, DJ to do that. And Hangout isn't about AI, it's about HI, human intelligence. We're getting back to the roots, back to vinyl, back to people just picking songs and sharing it with all of their friends, all of their city, all of their community. You know, it's interesting you bring that up, Joseph, because I feel as though you know, AI may, may know some of my patterns, but I like to break those patterns sometimes. Yes. I like to find, like, I'm not really into hip hop, but I was kind of into hip hop this weekend and mm -hmm. learned quite a bit about it. Um, and actually, again, another really interesting experience. When I was getting into it, there was some folks in the balcony that started hooting and hollering at me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that was an interesting connection that I mm. made. Started talking to those guys. You know, AI would never have put hip hop in front of me. No. Never. Yeah. Right. But the human interaction, the human connection. So that's right. That's right. Th this is fascinating. So how, how did you come up with this idea? Was it sort of just a brainchild that you uh, came up to... to me originally in 2010? I was oh, wow. uh, had a long distance girlfriend at the time and YouTube was big then. So we were sharing YouTube links of music videos at the time that let me learn more about different new music. It let me learn about her and vice versa. And then I realized this is fun. Is there a way to make a product out of it? And once I thought through how to make a product, there was only really one way to do it. And so I started building, launched that, it went viral. And uh, that was a prototype for what I'm doing now with Hangout. And, and I'm sure you get this, are you funded company or? Yeah, we're funded by Founders Fund. Oh, okay. They were the original investors in fa Facebook and Spotify. How much did you raise? Can you share that? Total, uh, we announced we raised 8.2 8 million. Okay, so you yeah. significant. A, a seed and series, what, pre-seed or series seed? Seed, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so what is the 
the revenue model? So we have two revenue models. One is uh, subscriptions, freemium subscriptions. We won't have any ads. We think that part of the conflict from social media is caused by the ad eyeball revenue model. So instead, we're focused on subscriptions, freemium subscriptions. Most people won't subscribe. Some people will subscribe. And it's a big business. Hundreds of millions of people play, pay for music these online. The only, bigger, a big, only business as big as that is Netflix. So Netflix and Spotify are huge. People pay for music. People love music. Uh, if you look at consumer SaaS subscription rates, 40% of people pay for Spotify who use Spotify. That's huge. Yeah. Normal rate is like 5%, 10%. So that's one business model. The second business model is virtual goods. So these Club Penguin avatars, we're going to sell them. And Fortnite makes billions of dollars selling avatars. So we're going to make billions as well. Right. That's, uh, we've seen that model. As I said, Second Life, we were, right? That was yes, one of yeah. their monetization models. Yeah, and like that's, you say, that's true. It's a little clunky and just not, it, it wasn't, didn't have broad appeal. Music has broad appeal to everybody. Exactly. I, mean, I pay for Spotify. I don't know if you have or, or did. But so how do I engage with your platform? Where do I go? Is it Hangout? Yes, if you go to hangout.fm, you'll see our waitlist. We're going to launch this year, later this year. It's going to be very exciting. You can click sign up and put in your email address and we'll, we'll, get, we'll send you an email when we're ready to go. Hangout.fm. Yeah, or just Google Hangout. We're on the top page. Okay. All right. Well, I can't get out of the network here, mm -hmm. but I'm going to sign up <laughs> and, and, and get on the, uh, the waitlist. And so what's the time frame? Uh, by the end of the year. Great. Yeah. Well, congratulations on getting this off the ground. Good. Good luck. I'd love to have you back and talk about, you know, the progress that you're making and totally. And uh, how big is the team right now? Uh, we have less than ten people. It's a very oh, nice. lean, lean set of engineers. All distributed or remote team. Yeah, we started during COVID, so everyone's still remote. Good. Well, yeah. good luck. Really appreciate you coming on. Thank talking you about that. Thank you. All right, and keep it right there for our next guest. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube plus NYSC Wired. We're here. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage, our CXO series, right, right back after this short break.